let us um, read all together the very powerful word of the Lord in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 19. Can we read it? Please. loaded his donkey, he took with him two of his servant and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up on, at a distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there and we will worship and then we will come back to you. And Abraham took the wood for the offering and place it on his son Isaac. The angel of the Lord called out unto him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up in there in a thicket. He saw a ram caught by its horn. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time. And he said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the skies and as the sun of the seashore. Your descendants will take possessions of the cities of their enemies and throw your offsprings, all nations on earth, will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Then Abraham returned to his servant and then set off together for Beersheba, and Abraham stayed in Beersheba. May the Lord will continually add blessing upon the reading of His mighty, mighty, and powerful words. Let us all be seated in the very presence of our God and let us greet one another. Sabihin po natin, I'm blessed that you are here today. At sabihin mo naman sa iyong katsa sa kabila, I'm, I am excited to worship our God today. Praise the Lord. Let us give the best clap of praise to our living God. Amen. Is that for the Lord? Sige po lahat ng pinagpalang anak ng Diyos. Let's give Him the best clap of praise. Amen and amen. Praise God. Praise God. As we are de declaring revival. Amen. A call to absolute obedience. Amen. A call to absolute obedience. And when I was praying to the Lord for the message, and the Lord just placed into my heart and I entitled it, Qualitative Obedience Produces Blessings. Can you say it with me? Qualitative Obedience Produces Blessings. Amen. What a powerful statement. Amen. Or title. Amen. That God has placed into my heart and we are claiming that it shall come to pass. Amen. But it requires our qualitative obedience, the quality of our obedience. Amen? So the Bible clearly says as part of my introductions in the book of Luke chapter 11 verse 28, Amen? He replied, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. 
So we could, we, could, we could see there, amen, that there is blessing when we hear, amen, and when we obey the very word of God. Can I hear an amen? amen. So obedience involves listening attentively, amen, just like today. Tingnan mo yung kadabe, is it your, uh, the person next to you is listening attentively no, to the very word of God, amen, with a heart willing to obey our God. Amen? Talagang attentive. Hindi lang po pag marites ay attentive. Amen? More than anything else, we really need to be attentive in hearing the very word of God because as the Bible clearly says, that blessed. Amen? When you hear it and when you obey the very word of God. Amen? So from Genesis to Revelations, the Bible has a lot to say about obedience. Amen? In the Ten Commandments, amen, God gave us laws that, would, that we would, should obey, that we should obey, amen, the Ten Commandments, amen. And the Ten Commandments says that obey and you will be blessed. Disobey and you will be cursed. As simple as it is, amen. But we want to obey. Can I hear an amen? So in the New Testament, we learn through the example of Jesus Christ that believers are called no, to a life of obedience. Amen? Dapat ito na po yung buhay natin. Kung meron man po tayong karapatan, yung karapatan po nating sumunod. Kung ano po yung pinasasabi ng ating Panginoon. Amen? And today, we are not called to obey the law of Moses because that has been fulfilled no, in the time of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But we are to obey the law of Christ. Amen. Which is the law of love. Kaya nga po, last month, Amen, we are declaring a call to absolute, or a call to a passionate love. So I believe that the very foundations of our obedience is love. So that it will not be a burden to us. Amen. When we are motivated with God's love. Amen. And Jesus is stated the two no, greatest commands of obedience. Amen. When he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Kaya kapag umaawit ka sa Panginoon, talagang buong pusong pagmamahal. Can I hear an amen? amen. Kapag nga umaawit ka sa karaoke, feel na feel mo, nakapikit ka pa. What about... When we are singing a song no, for the Lord and we are pouring out our love unto the Lord because as the Bible clearly says that we really need to love Him with all. Amen. And love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. So obedience to God proves our love for Him. In the book of 1 John chapter 5, verse 5 to 3, demonstrate our faithfulness to Him. In the book of 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 to 6, and glorifies Him in the Word. Amen. And opens avenues of blessings for us. Because I believe it is God's will for us to be blessed. Do you agree? Sabihin nga po natin, it is God's will for me to be blessed. Parang konti lang ang gusto ng blessing. Because the Bible clearly says in the book of John chapter 10 verse 10 to be, 10 b, I have come that you may have life, a life to the fullest. Amen. Grabe, sino po yung gusto dito yung not just blessing but overwhelming blessing. Yung mga hindi nag amen, nagdadalawang isip. Amen. Sino po dito yung gusto ng rumaragas ang pagpapahala ng Panginoon? Amen. Sige po, ibigay po natin ng the best clap of praise to our living God. Amen. Believe it and have faith. Amen. And it shall come to pass when you declare it with faith. No, that God's will for your life, God's will for your family, God's will for you. And I believe you are not an accident. Amen. God's will for your life is to be blessed. Amen. And the Bible has much to say about obedience. Amen. In fact, obedience is an essential. Amen. Part of the Christian faith. 
And Jesus himself was obedient unto death. Amen. Even death on a cross. This is our theme verse for this month. Philippians chapter 2 verse 8. Amen. For Christians, the act of taking up our cross and following no, our Lord Jesus Christ every day. That's why our Lord Jesus Christ encouraged the disciples, amen, to take up, our, to take up their cross daily and follow Him. And I believe you wanted to follow Jesus. Can I hear an amen? And when we do not obey, Jesus asks, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Hello? Masakit ang salitahan ng Lord, ano? Kasi po, totoo. Sabi nga, truth hurts. Amen? Minsan, ang bilis lang po nating magsabi, I will obey you, Lord. I will follow you, Lord. Amen? Over my dead body. Sabi po ni Peter, ano? Pero sabi po ng salita ng Lord, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Therefore, we should say, Lord, help me to be disciplined enough, amen, to obey the way you want me to, amen, so that I can be the person, amen, you created me to be. Diba? The Lord created us according to His likeness and according to His image. The Lord wanted us to be like Him. Amen? Kaya yung katabi mo, it's, it's, uh, it's in the process no? Nasa proseso pa po yan. Amen. All of us. Amen. So God will hear our plea and will enable us to obey because once we believe in Christ, amen, and are saved, we are not the same person. No? Amen. We once were. Amen. Ano pong sabi ng salita ng Panginoon? Because if anyone is in Christ, amen, he is a new creation, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And there are Bible verses no, that talks about obedience. Amen. In the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. In the NLT version, amen, it says, Children! And where are the children of God? Tiniisip natin yung maliliit lang na bata, di ba? We are sons and daughters of God. Young men, old men, Amen. We are the children of God. Amen. Obey your parents because you belong to the Lord. Sabi mo sa yung katabi, you belong to the Lord. Amen. For this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you. Amen. And you will have a long life on the earth. Amen. What a wonderful, powerful promise of the Lord to all of us. If I may ask you today, amen, or if you are being asked by uh, someone or by your parents inside the family, what are those usual commandments no, or commands of our parents, especially all the CYN, the young uh, people? Hello? If you are being asked by your mom, you really need to sleep early so that you can have uh, you can have enough uh, rest. Diba? Sino po yung nasabihan kagabi? May church pa tayo bukas, matulog ka ng maaga. O, tumatawa yung mga parents. Sige pa, Sister Marian, diinan mo pa yan. Amen? Praise God. Or, I, I do not know, if you are being told by your parents when you were young, amen, sasabihin mo sa yung anak mo, amen, stay close so that you will not lose. Tapos maririnig mo na lang sa mall. Diba, paging? Alam mo na ang paging, di arrival, di pala. Diba? Sino po yung naranasan yung nawala sa mall? Huwag mo nang itas ang iyong kamay. Diba? So sasabihin, what are those common uh, commands of our parents, by our parents? Amen? Sasabihin ng at sino po yung may mga kapatid dito? Don't fight with your siblings. Oh, diba? Don't fight with your siblings. Eat healthy food. Oh, aray ko. Diba? Do not always eat uh, junk food. Sino po yung nasabihan ng ganon? The CYN. Lagi na lang CYN. Diba? <laughs> diba? Study hard. It's for your own good. 
Why is it our parents telling us those things? Kasi sabi nga, di ba yung word, yung lagi po nating anaririnig, papunta ka pa lang, pabalik na ako, paki-English po. <laughs> di ba? Di ba yun yung naririnig natin? We don't, uh, we don't want, no, our parents doesn't want us to commit mistakes, amen, or ayaw ng, ng ating mga magulang na tayo po ay mahirapan pagdating ng araw. Amen? You may realize it later. Pero mas maganda, dapat ngayon ma-realize mo na. Can I hear an amen? So who among us here, especially the young people, go home early. To those who have, been, uh, to, to those who have uh, uh, having gimmick, di ba? Yung uh, nag-hangouts. We are just hanging out, mommy. Oh, di ba? Yung mga ganun, may mga paislang-islang. Paano? Anong hanging-hanging out na yan? Dali mo kunin may mga diamond at ihanger mo yan. <laughs> di ba? Kasi yun yung mga panahon ngayon, di po ba? Or graduate first before relationship. Diba? Pero ang mga anak ng Diyos, mababait. Amen po ba? So, napakadami po. Amen? So, why? Because we live in a society where rebellion is communicated. Some people will tell you, you know what? Do whatever you want to do. You're still young. Anyway, your parents are old. They don't know nothing. You know, we are Gen Z. Ano ba yun? Gen Z? Diba? Millennial, your parents doesn't know. Do whatever you want to do. You are still young. Enjoy life while you are young. Yes, you can enjoy life, but if it is compromise the principle of God in our life, then that's a big problem. Can I hear an amen? Yes, we empower the CYN. Diba kaya nga tayo merong night of power. But to the extent that we will compromise no, the Word of God para lang magawa natin yung gusto natin, eh, slow down. We, you need to slow down. Hello? Because why? The book of, uh, in the book of 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14, it says, In the past, you did not have the understanding you have now. Now that you already, the Lord, that the Lord had already opened up our eyes in paraphrasing, so you did not, you did the evil things you wanted to do. But now, you are children of God. So you should obey Him and not live the way you did before. Di ba yung inawit natin kanina, I don't want to go back to my old life. Do you mean it? Do we really mean it? Amen. That when we say we don't want to go back to our old life, ayaw na nating balikan yung dati nating buhay. As the Bible clearly says. And that's why the Lord always reminding us, keep reminding us, if you love me, keep my commands. You really need to hate it. Amen. Hide it into our heart so that sin may not come in. Amen. In the book of Genesis chapter 22 verse 18 in the NLT version it says, And through your descendants all the nations of the earth will be blessed. All because you have obeyed me. Amen. And we all know that there are consequences if we don't obey the very word of God. Amen. And if we don't obey the very word of God, we are sinning. Amen. And there were many people who disobeyed God. And suffered the consequences. We know the story about Adam and Eve. Amen. They, they were punished in the Garden of Eden. Amen. And if they had obeyed the, the Lord, amen, there would not be sin in the world. Di dapat wala po tayo ngayon dito. Can I hear an amen? But there are also people who obeyed God. Amen. And there are rewards for obeying God. And some people who obeyed God were Noah. Di po ba? The life of Noah, Moses, David, Amen, Paul and Mary, even Isaiah, Elijah, Peter and Abraham, and Joseph. Marami pa pong iba. Amen. 
and they all got rewarded for obeying. They loved the Lord and did as they were told. Amen. Now take now let's take a look no the word qualitative. Amen. Qualitative define relating to the nature or standard of something. Amen. Rather than to its quantity. Amen. Kaya po mahalaga po yung may kalidad yung ating pagsunod. May quality. May standard ka ba? Dapat kung may standard tayo sa pananamit, dapat may standard din tayo sa salitahan ng Panginoon. Hello? Sige, palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Parang hindi naman mabitin si ate, oh. Praise God. The more, no? In the very word of God. So quantit qualitative can, uh, data can help us to understand why, how, or what happened behind certain behavior. Amen. Quantitative data tell us how many, parang qualitative versus quantitative. Amen. How many, how much, or how often in calculations. So quantitative is number-based, countable, or measurable. So my dearly beloved brothers and sisters, do you believe that the quality of our obedience matters to God? You will not just obey, but with quality. Sino po rito yung talagang sinusure kung may kalidad? Ang isda, di ba? Yung prutas. Hello? Especially the moms out there. Di ba? Tinitignan po natin. So what qualifications are necessary for quality obedience? Amen? And the Bible clearly says that if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best from the land. Do you want the best? Amen. But if you resist and rebel, or if you refuse and rebel, you shall be debarred by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Amen. Napakahalaga po. That's why number one points that we can learn no, in the life of Abraham. Amen. Qualitative obedience required authentic faith. Can you say it with me? Authentic faith. Not just faith, but authentic faith. Parang... Faith versus fake. No? So authentic means real, genuine, or true. Amen? Yan po yung ibig sabihin. Diba? Kapag ka, lalo na sa mga kababaihan, pag bumili ka ng bag, no? Authentic ba ito? Ay, hindi pala, lumang bag lang pala ito. So we live in a world filled with so much fake. Do you agree? It's hard to tell what is real and what is fake. Hello? And if God is not with us, you will be easily enticed and deceived by the enemy. And who is our enemy? Satan. Hindi yung katabi mo, hindi yung asawa mo. It is Satan. The spirit of this world. Amen? Amen? So nowadays, there is a lot of fake. Maniwala ka. Talagang maraming fake. Amen? There is also fake love. No? Hindi lahat na nagsasabi sa'yo ng I love you ay talagang mahal ka. Wow, may hugot. ba? Diba? Yung iba pa fall. Pero pagdating ng ano, iiwanan ka sa ere. Wow, sakit naman noon. Amen. Pero sabi naman ng iba, okay na yun sa ere, Sister Marian. At least malapit kay Lord. Wow, spiritual naman. Diba? There is fake love. So that's why it's really important to really know the very will of God. It is good, pleasing, and perfect. Di po ba? There is also fake relationship. Amen. Or fake news. Not everything that you are listening to is true. Can I hear an amen? amen? That's why we really need, amen, that discerning spirit to know if it is come from the Lord or it is come from the enemy. We really need to be sober, to be watchful, to be prayerful, so that you will know Totoo ba ang sinasabi nitong si Marites? Eh, Marites nga, kaya hindi totoo. 
Hello? Kailangan po, we really need to ask the Lord to anoint our ears, our heart, our mind. Because our mind is the battleground. Pabuti sana kung ang chismis ay, alam mo, sabi ni, ni, sino ba dito? <laughs> Di ba? Maganda daw si ganito. Ay, totoong maganda yan. Pabuti sana kung ganun, no? Amen. There is always, ang napakarami pong fake. When you go to the Facebook, di ba, Instagram, there's a lot of fake photos. And they will let, uh, 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 it, this word will suggest, oh, download the app. So that you'll be, like, uh, you will, um, tawag doon, pag dinownload mo to, magiging maganda ka. So hindi lahat ng maganda ay totoong maganda. Hello? Filter dito, filter doon. Dapat kung may pinifilter tayo, yung mga bagay na nilalagay ng kaaway. Hello? Hindi ako nagpaparinig ha. Pero totoo po yun. Amen. There's a lot of fake. And, I, and, and it is my prayer that our faith is not fake. But our faith is real, genuine, authentic. What does authentic faith mean? So authentic faith is believing in a God we do not see with our physical eyes because the righteous must live by faith. Amen. Through the eyes of faith. Yet we can know Him because He has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, the third person of the triune God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. And if the Holy Spirit is in us, we will be able to know whether it is fake or genuine. Alam mo kung totoo at hindi. Amen. And all faith comes through Jesus, the Son of God. Amen. Because authenticity is the process of being truly God-like while being fully human. Christ in us is the hope of such glory. In the book of Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. Amen. And also in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 to 3. Amen. Na lagi naman po natin itong naririnig, nababasa. Amen. Because the Lord wanted us not just to have faith, but a genuine faith in the Lord. Amen. Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for. An assurance of about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. Amen. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's commands. Just by His word. Amen. So that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Amen. And for us to know whether our faith is genuine or fake, we need to test it. Diba paano mo malalamang ginto? Kung hindi mo padadaanin sa apoy. How can you say that your faith is genuine if you don't go through test? No? If you will not go through the test of faith. Paano po natin malalaman? Amen? So biblical examples and illustrations through the life of Abraham. Di ba binasa po natin kanina? So how Abraham proved that his faith was genuine. Amen? So the Bible says that God told Abraham to take his son Isaac and to offer him up as a sacrifice. Amen? And God did this in order to test the validity of Abraham's faith. Amen? God wanted to know whether or not Abraham's faith was real enough to believe that God would bless him as he had promised. Amen. Kailangan subukin ng Panginoon even though he would have to sacrifice the son through whom these blessings would come, Abraham go through the test of faith. Amen. Naranasan na po ba natin? Amen. Na tayo po'y subukin ng ating pananampalataya? Parang ayaw ninyong masubukan. Amen. So Abraham got up early 
The next morning, he saddled his donkey and took along two of his servants and his son Isaac. Amen. He split wood for a burnt offering and set out for the place God has designated, had designated. Amen. In Genesis chapter 22 verse 3. Amen. And without any delay, Abraham obeyed what God said. Amen. We know the story. Then we read from scriptures. When they arrived at the place God had designated, Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood. He bound his son Isaac and placed him on the altar, no? On top of the woods. Amen. Then Abraham reached out his hands and took the knife to slaughter his son, to kill his son, literally. Amen. In Genesis chapter 2, 22, verse 9 to 10. And it's really hard to imagine, amen, that Abraham would have actually gone through with the slaughter, amen, of his son. And the Bible teaches us that is exactly what he was ready to do. And the book of Hebrews tells us why Abraham was willing. Why? Because it was by faith. Amen. It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Amen. Kaya tayo po, kapag dumadaan po tayo ng mga problema, madalas ang prayer natin, Why, Lord? Of all people, why me, Lord? Or maaring meron kang 17 problems. And you are praying to the Lord, Lord, remove at least one so that I have only 16 problems. Why not to pray to the Lord, Lord, give me enough strength to go through the test of my faith. Why not to just pray like that? Sasabihin natin, it's easy, Sister Marian. Alam niyo po, dito po talaga, madali lang mag Madali pong, madali pong magsalita pag hindi mo nararanasan. But I can attest to you, I can attest to you that we can boldly declare when you are truly experiencing or go through the test of faith. And you will have enough boldness to declare of who God is in your life that He is your great provider, that He is your great healer, that He is your great deliverer. Amen. Kaya mong ideklara yun. So Abraham's faith was so real that he believed that God would raise Isaac from the dead if indeed his life had to be taken. What a genuine faith Abraham has. Amen. So perhaps you are currently going through some great test of faith. Hindi yung great test, ha? Nakape. So while in the test, you may be tempted to wonder whether or not God really loves me and you will hit, and or he will, will God really take care of me, take care of my family? Diba? You may be facing great te tests, no? Of your faith in the area of your relationship towards your family, your husband, your spouse, your children. Amen. Or you may be facing great tests of your financial, no? Finances. Amen. Or through the test of uh, applying your LAMIA or persona, uh, permanent residence. Amen. Or citizenship, etc. and etc. I do not know, but only God knows. Amen. So I pray that Abraham's examples of trusting God will be an encouragement for all of us. Amen. Can we can we boldly declare? Amen. Like Job, no, in the book of Job 23, verse 10. Amen. Yet he knows the way I have taken. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. Ito po yung gustong makita ng Lord sa atin, na kahit dumadaan ka sa test no, ng buhay po natin in the area of our relationship, in the area of our finances, in the area of our job, 
in our studies, in applying all the uh, immigration, um, tawag dito, huh? all the concerns no, about your immigration, no? yung mga Elmia, permanent resident, whatever it is, no? always look upon the Lord. Amen. He is our God, the big, big God who made, who made the, the maker of the heavens and the earth in everything. Siya lang naman po yung Diyos na napakalaki. Heaven is His throne and the earth is just His footstool. Ganun po kalaki ang Diyos po natin. Sige, palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Amen. So as Abraham raised the knife to plunk it into his son's body, he heard a voice from heaven. Abraham, Abraham, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son for me. Amen. So what an amazing moment that must have been. Amen. No doubt. Amen. Abraham was wondering if he was really going to have kill, to have to kill, no? To kill his son, I'm assured that his ears were alert and attentive to his voice from heaven. But the problem, most of the time, we cannot hear. Because of so many noise of this word. And that's why it is really important to listen. Listen to the voice of the Lord. When we hear the voice of God, do not harden our hearts. Sasabihin mo, maraming beses ko na yan narinig si Sister Marian, yung example na yan kay Abraham, alam ko na yan. No? The voice of familiarity. If you are hearing that, you will not experience no? the power of God. But if your ears is sensitive enough to hear the voice of God, even as just a small voice, because you are close to our God, like Samuel, the third time, when he hear the voice of the Lord, here I am, Lord. Here I am, like Abraham. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. That's why I encourage you, my dearly beloved brothers and sisters, to be really sensitive. Do not go to the right nor to the left. But when you hear the voice of God, just obey it with faith, with great faith, with a genuine faith. And you will see the miracle of God in your life. Sige po, palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. If that is for the Lord, give Him praise. Amen. In Romans chapter 4, verse 16 to 18, it says, Therefore, the promise comes by faith so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who have the faith of Abraham. Amen. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is, he is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, and the God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. Amen. So against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations. Just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Amen. Hindi po nagbago ang pangako ng Panginoon sa buhay ni Abraham. And I do believe, amen, that the word of God is true in our life. Amen. It is really true. Amen. In my last verse, amen, in this... Um, Point, amen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 in the Amplified Version. But without faith, it is impossible to walk with God and please Him. For whoever comes near to God must necessarily believe that God exists and that He rewards those who earnestly and diligently seek Him. Amen. Kaya napaka powerful po ng salita ng Panginoon. Moving on to our second point. Amen. Qualitative obedience requires heartfelt worship. Can you say it with me? Nag-almosal ba kayo ngayong umaga? Amen. Heartfelt worship. Kanina napakaganda po ng mga awitin. Amen. Talagang tagos sa puso. 
Amen. And you cannot really help yourself but to cry out to God. Amen. Pouring out your love unto the Lord. Na kahit may pinagdadaanan ka, you are still able to give your heartfelt worship to our God. Can I hear an amen? amen. So heartfelt is defined as sincere. Sincere ba yung ating pagsamba sa Panginoon? Is it, it is genuine, earnest, and coming from the heart. It is not just coming from your nose. Oh, hindi pala. Coming from our heart, from the very bottom of our heart. Kaya pag nakita mo ang katabi mo, pag nag-worship kay Lord, dalawang kamay taas. Hindi mo alam kung anong pinagdadaanan yan. Hello? Because he wanted, he or she wanted to give his heartfelt worship to God no matter what we are going through, regardless of our situation. Amen? We decide, we choose to give our heartfelt worship to our gods. Can I hear an amen? amen. Alam nyo, madali lang sumamba kay Lord kapag ikaw ay bagong sweldo. Ah, hindi naman, Sister Marian. Diba? O ikaw ay mag may magandang trabaho. O lahat meron ka. But what if you don't have anything. You only have your heart. Kaya mo pa bang ibigay? As the Bible tells us in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 29, Ascribe to the Lord the glory due His name. Kaya kahit may sakit ka, kahit may nararamdaman ka, kahit may pinagdadaanan ka, Bring an offering and come into His courts. Diba? Psalms 84, better is one day in your courts, O God. This verse reminds us that when we come to worship, we should bring an offering of praise. I believe that our heart is full of gratitude, of praise and worship to our God. Kaya hindi na mahihirapan yung worship leader. Let us raise up our hands. Worship our God. As long as you can. We should come with a heart that is willing to give everything. Now if I may ask you, are you willing to give everything unto the Lord? Amen. Talagang mahirap po talagang mag-preach pag ganito po ang ating pinag-uusapan. Are you willing to give everything? All out worship? Heartfelt worship to the Lord? Kaya po ba nating ibigay yung todong pagsamba sa Panginoon mula sa kaibuturan ng ating puso? Na kahit ikaw ay may pinagdadaanan? O oh, sabi ko sa inyo, tatlo na lang. God knows we cannot hide anything. Alam ng Lord. Amen. So God is asking Abraham to go to Mount Moriah to worship him by taking his son, his only son, that he loves very much and sacrifice him as a burnt offering. And God is not only asking him but to kill Isaac, but cremate him. Diba? Di niya lang sasaksakin talaga. Ikikremate kasi lilagay niya sa ano eh. Diba? Kaya pala noon, uso na rin ang cremation. Diba? So before we go any further, let me take you back a few decades, no? And remind you of Abraham and Sarah about the story. Abraham and Sarah have gone all their marriage without, any, without having any children together of their own. Amen. And God promised, promised them a son. Amen. Then when their son Isaac is born, Abraham is now 100 years old. Kaya si Isaac, centennial baby. No? Centennial baby siya. 100 years old si Abraham. And Sarah was already 90 years old. So with God, nothing is impossible. Amen? Kaya kahit na naka, uh, you are facing that impossible situation, Amen? 
With God, nothing is impossible. I, uh, Abraham is already 100 years old. And Sarah is already 90 years old. Di po ba? And yet, they were able to experience the power of God. Amen. And God blesses them with a son. And now, amen, He is asking them to sacrifice Him and offer Him as a burnt offering. Now, put yourself in their shoes. Amen. Abraham must be asking himself, I've waited all my life, Lord. Diba? Rinamisyon ng Panginoon at the age of 75 years old. Diba? At nangyari yon at the age of 100 years old. So, mas, ma mas matagal pa yung, yung waiting period ni Abraham. Then the Lord now is asking to offer his son Isaac and give it to the Lord. Alam niyo po, nung binabasa ko po ito, I was really moved no, by God. Because when uh, Abraham asked by God to go to the mountain, sabi niya pa doon sa kanyang servant, di po ba, you just stay here and I will go, we will go to the mountain and worship our God and we will come back. Bakit sabi ko, Lord, bakit hindi sinama yung dalawang servant? They could be worship our God too. But why not? And I came to realize that when you go up to the mountain of God, there are people that you cannot really, you cannot bring it to, to you. Kasi minsan, sila pa yung nagpapatagal. Amen po ba? And although there is no indications, amen, of worry or anxiety on Abraham's part, he must have some. Don't you imagine? Amen. Let's continue reading. See if you sense any worry. Amen. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burn offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servant, Stay here. With a donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Amen. So there is no indications of any worry. No anxiety in this whole story of Abraham. Wala kang makikita na nag-alala, nag-isip si Abraham. Amen. So he's not rattled. He's not shaken. Amen. So how does this happen? How does worship wash away our worry? So there is difference, amen, between worry and worship. A huge def difference, amen. So worry is when you focus on yourself. Amen, your problems, your pain. Amen. You are worrying. Your sorrow, your current situation. But on the other hand, Worship is when you focus on God, His might, His majesty, His plan, His greatness, His glory, His power. That is worship. Let us turn our worry into worship. Let us turn our worst situation into worship. Maaring you are experiencing worse situation. But why not to turn your worse, worse, worship, worse into worship, worry into worship? Amen. So Abraham's focus was not on Isaac. In Abraham's mind, Isaac was as good as a slain. That's not where his focus was. He was doing what God told him to do. His focus was on God. And the reason you see no indications of worry, no anxiety on Abraham's part, it is because he is not focused on himself. He is not focused on his son. His focus is just on God. Amen. On God alone. The power of God, the greatness of God, and what God can do in his life. Yun po yung focus ng, ni, ni Abraham. And I believe it is the same. No? To all of us, that no matter what, our focus, amen, is to worship our God. Amen. That's what worship is. He was focused. 
To some of you, perhaps, worried right now. Amen? Nag-worry ka kung anong kakainin mo mamaya. Nag-worry ka, baka malate ka. Simple worriness that distract us. No? Take us away from the very presence of our God. You are worrying about your well-being, your health. Amen? Ang dami mong winu-worry. Why not just to worship your God? Develop a laser focus on the greatness and glory of God. Worship Him and allow Him to wash away your worry. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 19, Abraham knew that even if, if he slayed Isaac, God was able to raise him up. Amen. Even from the dead. Amen. And I believe the, the relationship of Abraham towards our God is so close. That's why Abraham was able to put his trust in God. Amen. So this is what Abraham was thinking. So heartfelt worship is when your focus is on, is on God. Amen. Regardless of what you are going through. Amen. So heartfelt worship keeps the glory of God, not the works of men, the center of attention. So my heart rejoices in the Lord and in the Lord, my horn is lifted high. Amen. There is no one holy like the Lord. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, 2, verse 1 to 2. Magnify the Lord in worship. Rejoice in and praise His holy name in song. So we can turn our sorrow into joy. Amen. We can turn our test into, God can turn your test into testimony. You, know, you can turn your worry into worship. Amen. So heartfelt worship lead us to our breakthrough. When we worship, God intervenes in our situations. Do you agree? And God restores what was lost. God will fight for us, for the battle is not ours. Amen. These trials are not to destroy us, but to develop us, to build us, and to strengthen us, our faith in God. Amen. To cause us to know who God really is. Because without them, we wouldn't have testimonies. Amen. We wouldn't understand what God can do. So instead of thinking God has rejected us, we should instead see Him as a father. We cannot forsake His children. Amen. We should look beyond our circumstances. If we are to see the greatness of God, God always works on our behalf. Amen. Plead for us. We may not see it. Amen. Nor understand, but that's okay. We don't have to. We only have to trust that is God, no, that He is in control of everything, including your love life. Diba? He is in control of everything, including your studies, including your work, including everything. Amen. He is in control. Do you remember the life of Paul and Silas? Amen. Suddenly the prisons were shaken, the doors were open, and everyone's chains was loosed. Amen. They worship our God. Amen. Causes the supernatural happen, miracles, signs, and wonders will take place. Amen. Because we choose to worship our God. Amen. So brethren, I just want to encourage you that you are going no, through the season that won't last forever. Amen. Season that don't last. Come and go. Amen. They either affect us or impact us. God causes them to happen in our lives for a reason, for a purpose, and for our good. Let us just put our trust in Him. God is up to something, though you cannot see it. Amen. We need to be patient and wait no, for the act of the Lord. Sabi nga po ng Psalms 46 verse 10, Be still and know that He is God. He will be exalted among the nations and He will be exalted among the earth. Just put your trust in God. Worship Him. Amen. And to everything, there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. So beloved, do not think it is strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. As though some strange 
thing happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering, that when His glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. Amen? Ano pang sabi ng, Psalm, ng Isaiah 41 verse 10? Fear not, for I am with you. Be not, be, be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous and powerful hands. Amen. This is the very promise of the Lord. Amen. I pray that God strengthen each one of us. Amen. And I believe that this word will truly encourage us and will lead us to worship the one through God. Amen. And thirdly, 11.33 na. Praise God. My last point. Qualitative obedience requires absolute sacrifice. Amen. As we are declaring, absolute obedience also requires absolute sacrifice. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28, So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many, and He will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for Him. So I believe that God calls us to be a living sacrifice. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1, Offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, for this is our spiritual act of worship. Amen. So this means realizing Christianity is not expectator. Amen. We are not an expectator. It involves personal engagement. So a living sacrifice give oneself wholly to the cause of Christ. Amen. Going back to our text, and Abraham went up the mountain to give his most loved, most treasured, most prized possession. Isaac went up the mountain to give himself as well as a living sacrifice. Amen holy and acceptable to God. So Abraham's willingness to sacrifice his son is a test of faith. Amen. So sacrifice in essence refers to the act of giving up something valuable or essential for the sake of a higher purpose to honor our God. Amen. This sacrificial practice is deeply embedded in various passages of the Bible. Ultimately, reflecting the ultimate sacrifice made by Jesus Christ for the redemption of humanity's sin. Amen. So a key element of sacrifice in Christianity it is, is it transformative power. So allowing individuals to experience spiritual growth and deepen their connection with our God. So by sacrificing personal desire. Amen. Now if I may ask you, are you willing to, to, to offer... Amen. Or to sacrifice your personal desire, even though you feel hungry. Amen. Are you willing to sacrifice your material possessions? Nako, Sister Marian, wag yan. Amen. Or even one's own ambitions for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Christians learn the value of selflessness and humility, aligning our will or aligning our lives with the, teach, with, with, uh, with the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the act of sacrifice becomes a means of drawing closer to God. Amen? Cultivating a spirit of gratitude and contentment. So in Christianity, the ultimate exemplar of sacrifice is exemplified. In Jesus Christ's crucifixions, amen, His selfless act of offering Himself as the perfect sacrifice for the salvations of humanity. No? Epitomizes the love and mercy of God. Through His sacrifice, the redemptions of mankind was made possible in the bridge between humanity and God was restored. Amen. So following Jesus' example, Christians are called to sacrificially Serve and love others, making a positive impact on the world around us. Amen. Why? Because there are spiritual benefits of sacrifice. Amen. 
It is strengthen our faith and trust in God. Amen. Kaya po kapag may mga sacrificial giving po tayo, amen, if there is a, a sacrificial offering, amen, in building our uh, church, amen. So are, you, are we willing to give? Parang walang willing. I know you are all willing, amen. Sige po, palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Amen. So different sense of gratitude for God's blessing enhance our spiritual growth and transformation. So the lessons from Genesis 22 verse 1 to 19, God blesses absolute sacrifice. Alam ng Lord na yan na lang ang meron ka. Amen. God does not ask us to give our treasures because He is heartless or love to watch us agonize. Amen. He sometimes calls us to sacrifice that which we treasure to make us lean more into Him instead of the treasure. And when we do this, He blesses us in ways that our treasures is incapable of doing. Now, if I may ask you, are you willing to give your Isaac? Are you willing to give your sacrifice unto the Lord? Sabi po ng Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2, And walk in the way of love. Just as Christ loved us and gave Himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Amen. It's yet another reminder of Jesus of selfless love. Christ died for our sins and loved us enough to sacrifice His love, His love for humankind. So we too can take a lesson from this as we prepare to care for others with a truly selfless love. Amen. And conclusion, do you want to be blessed? Ayan, maraming nag- Amen. Amen. Then be like Abraham. Have a great faith and exercise your great faith in God. Do not withhold anything from Him. Not your beloved son or your Isaac, Isaac of your life. Not your money, not your possession, or even your status. Amen. Or not even your emotions. Obey our great God in great faith. For this is the path to blessing. It is the way to glorify our God and to enjoy Him forever, which is our chief end. Amen. And we will hear the commendations of our God. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. So obedience is not measured by our ability to obey laws and principles. Obedience is measured by our response to God's voice. According to Bill Johnson. Amen. And I believe that through this message, we are able to receive a fresh revelation from our God that will lead us to a radical obedience. Amen. Sige po, let us all stand up in the very presence of our God. And today, let us just focus our eyes unto Jesus. Let us give our focus to our God. And let us continually ponder the very Word of God in our life. I know for sure that the Lord is, is speaking unto us personally and intimately. I know that you have already heard the Word of God many times, many times in our life. But today is a different day. The Lord wanted us to hear His voice. Not just to hear, but to obey Him. And let us ask the Lord to test 
our faith, whether it is genuine. And let us give our heartfelt worship to the Lord, no matter what you are going through. And bring our absolute sacrifice to the God who loves us so much. Let us sing that song prayerfully with great faith. Let us continually sing that song personally to our dear gods. I give my all to you. And let us say to the Lord.
Worship, allow you to experience His miracles. Worship, allow you the impossible things. Yes, worship. presence oh God and today oh Lord I know and I believe that as we receive your powerful words oh God as we meditated your words oh God in our life Lord we claim Lord that you may continually increase oh Lord our faith like never before oh God the faith oh Lord that faith oh Lord that can move mountains oh God of problems that faith oh God hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah, that will lead us, oh God, to experience signs, wonders, and miracles, oh God, in our life. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. And today, oh God, as your people prayed, oh God, earlier, I know for sure, oh God, that you listen, oh God, to the prayers of your people, that you have already answered, oh God, all their prayers, all their petitions, oh God, with signs, wonders, and miracles in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, oh God, hallelujah, that despite, oh Lord, or in spite, oh God, hallelujah, of what we are going through, oh God, we are claiming your very powerful words, oh God, that we are more than conquerors, oh Lord, through Christ Jesus, who strengthen us in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. And today, oh God, as your people worship you, oh God, Lord, continue, oh God, to open heaven, oh Lord, in the lives of all your people, even in the overflow, even in the live stream, oh God, and pour out your blessings, oh God, heavenly blessings, oh God, hallelujah, miraculous healings, oh God, in the lives of all your people, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray, hallelujah, that you may continually stretch forth your miraculous hands, oh God, especially to those who worship you, Hallelujah to those who have faith in you, O oh God, and believe in your very words, O oh God. I know for sure, O oh Lord, hallelujah, that it shall come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I also pray, O oh God, to those who are praying, O oh God, hallelujah, hallelujah for their applications, O oh God, in the immigration, O oh Lord. Hallelujah, we pray, Lord, that you are our sovereign God. The God who is in control of everything. Lord, I pray for your divine favor in the lives of your people. Especially, Lord, to those who are experiencing, oh God. Hallelujah, that impossible situation. Lord, we know 
that you are the God of impossibilities and nothing is too difficult for you to do. Nothing is too difficult for you to perform, oh God. It shall come to pass and you will prove unto them, oh God, that our God is alive. That our God is a mighty, mighty God in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, just receive your miracles. Just receive the answered prayers. Just receive your provisions. Just receive a spiritual breakthrough. Just receive it by faith. In the name of Jesus, just believe. 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 Believe and have faith in God. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, O Lord. And it is all our promise, O God, today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah that we promise, Lord, that we will not touch any single glory, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we just give everything unto you and offer everything unto you, O God, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you. We honor you, Lord, and we love you. This is all we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.